It's the War of 1812, and the Canadian capital of York has just been burned by American forces. When the War of 1812 broke out, Britain was currently at war with Napoleon, meaning most of their resources were spent not fighting in America, but in Europe. But when Napoleon was defeated, the British began committing more manpower to the war with the United States, in order to break the ongoing stalemate. Most of the fighting had been going around the Great Lakes up in the Canadian border, but the British wanted to open up more fronts to take the fighting away from the Canadian territory. The British began their campaign in the Chesapeake Bay, raiding the eastern shores of the United States in an attempt to destroy their morale. The British saw weakness in the US state's coastal cities and chose to assault Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. Admiral Cochrane ordered Admiral Cockburn to destroy and lay waste in such towns and districts as he may find assailable. You will spare merely the lives of the unarmed inhabitants of the United States. On August 24th, 1814, Major General Ross's army of 4,500 men defeated Americans at the Battle of Bladensburg, allowing the British to march into the capital of the United States. Fortunately for the Americans, as soon as they were defeated at Bladensburg, President James Madison, along with other members of the government and military fled the city to Brookville, Maryland. Before the British had access to the capital, First Lady Dolly Madison had many irreplaceable artifacts from the founding of the nation secured. As the British entered the capital, Admiral Cockburn was ready to burn the entire city, but General Ross limited the arson to only public buildings, leaving out any private property. Although the White House may have been the most iconic and known building burned for many watching today, the most valuable building was actually the Capitol, since that single building had many areas to it that are in separate buildings today, such as the Library of Congress. So when the Capitol building was burned, so was the 3,000 volume collection inside. The British then quickly turned their sights to the iconic White House. Though it was called the Executive Mansion back then. Captain Blanchard and his men were sent to burn the house, but when they entered, there was a feast waiting for them. The soldiers then proceeded to burn the house after their feast. Up next was a building of the DC newspaper, however this one was simply took apart brick by brick as Admiral Cockburn didn't want any negative press about him, especially if the fires spread to neighboring civilian houses. Unfortunately for the British, the Treasury Building did not contain many treasures, but only had old records, so it and the Department of War Building were promptly burned. When the smoke cleared, one building remained, the good old patent office. The marine barracks and the commandant's house along with much of the private property around DC also remained as they were spared. The inferno from all the fires were so great that the glow was able to be seen from 50 miles away. Fires were only then burned out due to a huge storm that swept through the city. However, this storm may have also brought a tornado that damaged even more of the burned city. Unfortunately for the British officers at the burning, European leaders and the British citizens were shocked and denounced their burning. And even their intended effect of demoralizing the United States did not work. As usual, the Americans were even more motivated to defeat the British, and although the war did end in a stalemate, they still gave them a harsh defeat at the Battle of New Orleans. The White House became operational in 1817, and the Capitol building was operational by 1819. Overall, despite the sacking of their capital city, Thomas Law described the city like a phoenix rising from the fires, stronger than ever before.